So what are you showing here? Yes, okay, welcome. I'm Gail from ST Ericsson. So I would like to show you the three gigahertz demonstration. It's about uh, our new product, L8580. And this L8580 is a mod app. So we have both an application engine inside and we have also an advanced LTE model. So this uh, device is built on uh, FDSOI technology. So we have the reference design in front of you and uh, the device itself, L8580, is showing 3 gigahertz. And this is feasible thanks to the FDSOI technology. So, and we have also the e-quad inside. So it means that with this technology, you can run both very, very high speed, 3 gigahertz, and very, very low speed, low power. And what is very interesting, i just give you a number. The number is, you want to run 1 gigahertz to do some active idle, then you need only 0.6 volts. It's, in terms of power consumption, it's 50% less than the standard technology. So 50% lower, usually it will be how much to run uh, one gigahertz? Oh, honestly, it's 50% for the mod applications. Then you have to take into account the full system, the full platform. So it really depends on the display, on the connectivity, on uh, many things. But just the, just the chip by itself is 50%? The just chip is 50% less. And why do you talk about 1 gigahertz? Uh, is that because it's standby mode? What is that, the 1 gigahertz part? 1 gigahertz, what we call it, uh, idle mode, but it's an active idle. So if you need a little bit of power to manage the MEMS, to manage the camera, to do face recognition, to unlock your device, you have to run roughly at 1 gigahertz. And in this case, you have a lot of power, you are still idling, so very low energy taken from the battery. I, I can give you a good example with this slide if you want. So it, it, it is how you use your device during 24 hours. During 24 hours, in this case, let's say you are doing YouTube streaming during one hour and 30 minutes, you are playing, doing a video record during 20 minutes, you play during one hour, you browse during one hour and 30 minutes, and you do a call during one hour. It's over your day. If you use FDSOI technology, at the end of the day, you still have, compared to the standard bulk process, you still have, on the same battery, five hours more to do web browsing, for example. Nice. This is huge. Yes, it's a very, very disruptive technology. Can you explain a little bit, uh, FDSOI, what does that, that work? How does that? Does That's okay. So, you, you have the video there, it's a video on, available on YouTube. The difference is when you want to shrink the channel. Today we build man the device at 28 nanometer in bulk process. If you want to shrink more, the parasitic effect, the leakage, the parasit diode in the substrate uh, it, it is very damageable for running at lower uh, size. When you shrink at 20 nanometer, you cannot. So in this case, in our technology, we use an FDSOI substrate. So you have this, what we call the box, the buried oxide. And this buried oxide prevents the leakage into the substrate. You do not have the leakage, except for tunnel effect, but it's very limited compared to the bulk. Also, the leakage inside the gate is really limited because the oxide there, you can do it uh, thicker. And so you can continue to shrink. And for example, we use for this device, the L8580, we use a 28 nanometer process for, with FDSOI. And it means that uh, the channel length is only 24 nanometer. This is how it was before. So this is the 24 there. You can that's the previous technology. Exactly. We call it bulk. So we create a channel between the source and the drain. And what is very, very important is this channel is fully depleted. We do not introduce dopant inside. What do you don't introduce? So if it's fully depleted, you, you even remove other bad effects you have in the bulb. And you can also supply back biasing the substrate. You can do it with bulk, we agree. But the way you do it, with uh, FDSOI is a lot more clever. So inside the mobile phone, it translates it to uh, operating print. 
And operating point is means that your device is constantly uh, moving from low, low speed, high speed, middle speed. So your device, when you use it, sometimes it's at only 400 megahertz, 800, 1 gig, 1.2, 2 gigs, 3 gig. It really depends on the, the need you have in terms of MIPS and power. So with, with FDSOI, we can uh, manage differently the back biasing. So if you do that, you, do, you have a solution to run the, process, the processor at 1 gigahertz with only 0.6 volts. This is what we call equal. So we do not need to have two uh, microprocessors for high performance and two microprocessors for uh, lower performance for lower energy. We use the same processor. This is the same software, but we have electrically two different modes. So electrically, we emulate some things like having twice the quantity of processor we have. This is what we call equal. So this is what you introduce now? Yes, yes, because what we noticed is when you have a quad-core processor, when are you using the four cores, honestly? When do you do web browsing, it's only using maximum two cores. And most of the time, we say it's using 1.5 cores. It's one or two, one or two. So you do not need four cores to really run web browsing. Only demanding applications for more than two cores is, for example, video editing. And we prefer, as the software is not available to manage really the four cores, we prefer to propose an equal solution where we have two cores, really optimized for high speed, 3 gigahertz, and that can also run at low power mode with FDSOI. This is what we call equal. So it's, um, in the press release, this talk about ST Microelectronics doing the FDSOI. Uh, it, it, how does it, it work? Who's doing what? And uh, what kind of, is a huge work to design this? No, no, no. It's, it is another aspect very interesting. It's a good question because when we do a design of FDSOI, it is still a planar technology. And in fact, most of the IP you have to, to root uh, onto this FDSOI processor, it's directly the one coming from the bulk design. So it's not really different. Few IOs are different, but it's very limited. So the technology itself, the silicon technology, the manufacturing technology is coming from ST Microelectronics, and the design is coming from ST Ericsson with a LT advanced modem plus application engine and multimedia. All right, so how soon are uh, these um, uh, devices? FDSI devices? Yeah. How soon can... Uh, we, we are starting to, to ship samples to customers, and it will be uh, ready for production uh, for application engine end of the year, and uh, uh, the full system, the mod app with the modem uh, LT Advance, uh, beginning of next year in Q1. And when you talk about 14 nanometer and 10 nanometer, you also add uh, FinFET on top of this technology? No, 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 it's directly uh, in competition. It's competition with FinFET? Ah, yes. It's totally different than FinFET? It's, it's very different. Uh, the, the approach is very different. Okay. But the, the target is to continue to shrink the device. How to have a 10 nanometer? It's not feasible with bulk. Some people, uh, Intel, of course, uh, they develop SynFET for that, and we develop FDSI. All right. And cool. what is very interesting is FDSI complexity. It's 12% oh, less, yes. less, less compared to the bulk technology, so... Less complex. Yes, it's less complex in manufacturing. It's more accurate, but it's less complex. Better yield? And the yield, the yield. it will be very good. Yeah. Complexity is less, so the yield is better. So in theory, with mass production, it's, the price is even lower to... Ah. Uh, as a price... It's uh, expensive technology. Yes, I think that compared to SynFET, yes. Honestly, I think it's less complex. So we, we can accept, uh, we, we can do the device for mobile phone and keep the, the price pressure in the market. Is this going to be used in the Cortex A15 coming out later? Yes, of course, it can be used with uh, A15, no limitation. Big Little, is there any announcement about uh, to, that? Today, honestly, today uh, Big Little is not really interesting because with the quad system, we do like Big Little. So is that your version of that? It's a technical, electrical version of that. So we do as big little, 
but with the same core, same software. Cool. Now, of right. course, we can imagine to have a gain if we use Big Little, <laughs> but also we will use more silicon or air. So right. it's, a, it's a matter of trade-off. So are you suggesting that Equal is the best of these Big Little implementations last time? Big Little is good, but it's more array on your silicon, of course. So in this case, it's less array, it's the same software. Right, so looking forward. And all, all these are uh, devices right now with EU8500 and the map yes. heads. Yes, so you have the Galaxy S3 Mini and the Sony Xperia. They're it, all uh, mass market devices. Oh, yes. And that's the dual core Cortex A9, no? Exactly. Shanda Bamboo. And the Panasonic. Panasonic is using our Tor modem. And uh, those are the same. They're just using the modem, you mean? Yeah. Yes. All right. The other is a full uh, modem. And uh, FDSY, is that using modems too? Is uh, FDSY, sorry? FDSY can be used for the, L for the LTE stuff? Yes, yes, of course. Everything. Yes, it's a planar technology. The design is very similar, very limited difference in the design, so you can use it also for 7400, for example. Cool. 